But full faith and credit, we are broke. We are insolvent. We are almost $200 trillion in debt. Where's the justice? Where's the liberty? Where is it right now when things that we see can happen the way that they are, when they go after uh, a former sitting president the way that they have and completely ignore what is happening here, watching these, these, these House inquiries right now, it just blows my mind and it's disheartening. You can see that this is happening and it's accelerating and it is coming. And if you are not a contrarian, as Rick Rule says, you're gonna be a victim. That I do believe. And we're about to witness some big changes in this country. Hello and welcome to Crypto Street, where we bring you the latest and most intriguing stories from the world of cryptocurrencies. In today's video, we'll be unraveling the secrets of Bitcoin's future. But before we jump into that, let's take a look at some recent developments in the cryptocurrency market. SEC Chair Gensler calls crypto Wild West. While asking for more money, SEC Chair Gary Gensler has requested a significant increase in the agency's budget, justifying his stance with concerns over non-compliant behavior in the complex crypto markets. Bitcoin Exchange Traded Funds ETFs, can act as a gateway to crypto for users who will eventually show greater interest in the underlying asset. Such ETFs could get proved to be one of the most effective ways of hastening the adoption of cryptocurrencies. Whales stirring up waves with mega transactions in BTC, ETH, SHIB, and SOL. Bitcoin Cash uptrend wanes as Cardano holds firm. Investors exploring Boro. Binance France audited holds 1 billion euros in crypto. Google embraces digital assets, Polkadot, Cardano, and Digitoads demand soaring. Bitfinex hackers may plead guilty, prosecutors to recover $3 billion. FTX wanted to buy Island of Noru, paid themselves huge bonuses, court doc show. FTX sues SBF, former execs to recover over $1 billion. Polygon ecosystem grows with Blockto's $1 million accelerator. Coinbase calls on users to repay loans by November. DeFi protocol Conic Finance hacked for 1700 ETH. Now let's begin our enlightening discussion with Andy Sheckman. You're talking about to me during 2020, and the obvious horrific thing was a virus, but to me the most horrific thing was censorship, cancel culture, uh, or now the, the obsession of transgenderism, or wealth inequality, or, or alarmism related to climate change, or the violence and the protests that and, and the defunding of the police that motivated me to leave Minneapolis almost three years ago, uh, or, or the blatant political corruption that we see in this country, of all places, the land of the free, the home of the brave, where people will trudge miles, hundreds or thousands of miles on foot to find a better life, or raft across a, 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 a stormy sea to find a better life in this country. And as I said before, liberty and justice were all. But is it really being applied equally? Is justice and liberty really being applied equally? You know, the full faith and credit in the United States government and the backing of the Saudis and, the, and, and, and OPEC pricing oil in dollars. Well, that's what makes the dollar the dollar, right? The full faith and credit. We are broke. We are insolvent. We are almost $200 trillion in debt. We are a banana republic by banana republic measurements. Well, that's not much for the credit. During his testimony before the U.S. Senate Appropriations Subcommittee on Financial Services and General Government regarding the SEC's fiscal year, FY, 2024 budget request, SEC Chairman Gary Gensler discussed the state of the cryptocurrency market. He highlighted the tremendous growth and changes in the crypto markets and expressed concern about the lack of compliance and risks posed to investors in this highly speculative asset class. Gensler emphasized the need for the SEC to be well-funded to effectively regulate the evolving crypto markets and combat wrongdoing. He requested a budget of $2.436 billion for SEC operations in FI 2024 to support the agency's efforts to protect investors and address risks in the crypto markets, cyber and information security, and the resiliency of critical market infrastructure. The SEC chairman has been known for his strict approach to regulating the crypto sector through enforcement. He believes that most crypto tokens, except for Bitcoin, are securities. However, a recent ruling by the District Court for the Southern District of New York declared that XRP, a cryptocurrency associated with Ripple, is not a security. Gensler expressed disappointment over the ruling, particularly concerning its potential impact on retail investors. Gensler's testimony signals the SEC's continued focus on the crypto industry and its commitment to regulating the market to protect investors and ensure market integrity. 
The SEC's stance and regulatory actions in the crypto space will be closely monitored by market participants and industry stakeholders. How about the full faith? How many people really have faith in the judicial system right now after watching the dichotomy and the way that the Biden administration is treated versus the Trump family? It's just, it's just disgusting. It's more frightening to me than any pandemic ever was. This is not the country that I grew up in or you, and I don't care what people say. It's not, and things are changing. And when you talk about the full faith and credit behind an insulted country who is disregarding the equal application of the law, to me, it is alarming. It is not what the world reserve currency stands for, nor is weaponizing of a dollar and sanctioning assets that turn into confiscating assets that turn into giving it to the Ukraine to a war that we should never be involved in, bankrupting our country, selling all our munitions, I could go on and on and on. Main street media disinformation, the rising acceptance of socialist ideas, stakeholder capitalism over, over shareholder capitalism, or ESG, where Larry Fink, the head of the biggest hedge fund in the world, thinks it's okay to call the CEOs of every company that he throws his money on and says, well, if you're not ESG compliant, what I'm getting at is things are changing. Bitcoin BTC remain in the red on Friday as the cryptocurrency moved back below the $30,000 level. After hitting a high of $30,406.45 on Thursday, BTC slash USD fell to a bottom at $29,638.10 earlier in the day. This decline resulted in Bitcoin moving near Tuesday's floor at $29,525, which was a one-month low. The latest sell-off came as the Relative Strength Index, RSI, dropped below a key support point at 49.00. Currently, price strength is tracking at 48.09, with a 46.00 market potential target for sellers. Additionally, the 10-day red moving average has begun separating from its 25-day blue counterpart, which could be a sign of an upcoming downturn. After making a strong rebound on Thursday, Ethereum, ETH, was largely lower in today's session. ETH, the flash USD, edged to a bottom at $1,879.73 earlier today, which comes a day after peaking around $1,920. Friday's sell-off briefly sent Ethereum below a support level of $1,880. However, bulls have since moved to stabilize this floor. Unlike with BTC, Ethereum's 10-day red moving average remains upwards facing, which could be a sign of sentiment in the market being bullish. In order to validate this theory, there will first have to be a breakout on the RSI, in particular a ceiling at 52.00. That wraps up today's crypto news highlights. Stay tuned for more updates, insights, and analysis from the world of cryptocurrencies. Please share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more engaging content.